Hello, my name is Graham Parkwer and I'm with Susanna von Camera here in Canberra at the Australian National University and we're celebrating the choice by the Royal Society of the two of us as shared Royal Medalists and it's a, a great day for us. It's definitely a great honour and I also think it's a great honour that plant science is being recognised. An Australian plant science. An Australian plant science. So we're really delighted to have received this honour. The reason that we understand that we've been chosen is for work that we've done on, on photosynthesis. Mm. We've, uh, with a colleague, Joe Berry, we published a paper in 1980, which was a mathematical model of photosynthesis. And then to prove that there was something in it, Susanna took the lead on experiments which checked out the key parts of the, of the modelling. And we published that in 1981. And I guess what's, what's gratifying is that the work is still very popular. Yes, indeed. Yeah, has formed the basis of a lot of reasons. We're, we're a fairly slippery pair. We allow modifications of the model yes. if they fit. Yes. <laughs> I think photosynthesis is the major process um, that provides us with, you know, growth of plants and therefore food. It provides us also with the oxygen we breathe and it provides us with the sugars and the carbohydrates which either we eat or, you know, other animals eat. So it's essential for all life on Earth. So I came into um, photosynthesis research from mathematics. Um, and so when I started my PhD with Graham, we were working on the model. And um, I guess the thing we did was we connected the underlying biochemistry with other measurements being made, which CO2 uptake of leaves. And um, in the experimental work we did, we measured both the biochemistry by extracting leaves and so on, and we measured the whole leaf sort of photosynth photosynthesis with gas exchange. And by bringing those bits together, I think we made a real impact on the research at the time. There was a need to know how photosynthesis would change if stomata were more open or more closed than they normally are. That turns out to be important in predicting optimal water use efficiency. So that was one reason behind why we thought it was important to do. I think another is that people started to think perhaps optimistically, perhaps should have done it earlier, but questions about how to improve photosynthesis or how, how at least to manipulate it in such a way that greater growth occurred. I think we linked the photosynthetic biochemistry with, with gas exchange measurements at the time. And I think that was a real novel, in a quantitative way, and I think that was one of the very novel aspects of our work. The model and the, and the testing of the model have stood the patients of time yes, pretty yeah. well. Pretty well, yes. And the, people still keep citing it yeah, today. The papers are still highly cited and form the basis of yeah, a lot of research. What, are, what other areas do you think it's had a big impact on Susanna? Well, I think because it was such a succinct and uh, compact model, it's been embedded as a sub-model in many other models, like in crop models, people that want to model uh, canopy photosynthesis or, or you know, crop grows. And of course, also in the terrestrial sort of climate change modeling, it's had a real impact because, you know, it gave a very succinct way to capture CO2 uptake by the terrestrial biosphere. It was the basis for extension to, to include C4 photosynthesis, where the first product of uh, carboxylation is a four carbon molecule, and that was led by Susanna. Also, the equations seem to translate pretty well to take into account what happens if the carbon dioxide in use has an extra neutron, which would make it C13, six protons and six 
neutrons become C, C12 and then C13 has an extra neutron. So by applying the principles that we, that we had in the, in the first paper to the different isotopes, we found that we, we ended up with data that could be used for estimating gas exchange in terms of water use as well as carbon gain. And so that was useful for water use efficiency. Yes. Our biggest collaboration was early on in formulating the model. Yes. And then um, our research often has gone in different directions. Yes. We have quite done quite a lot of independent research, yes. um, although most of the time on uh, photosynthesis. I went into molecular biology and it allowed me to test quite a few questions which wouldn't weren't really testable uh, otherwise. So. Yes, and while you're doing that, I, I tended to go more towards an interest in climate change and increasing levels of CO2 because the, the model gave predictions about how photosynthesis should change with CO2 concentration. And being optimistic about it, we, people would apply the model and make conclusions about the growth of large swathes of the Earth's surface, which is pretty optimistic, I think. But once again, we're grateful to people who, who try it out and test it. I've always been able to do the research I really, really enjoyed. And so I look back on it with pleasure because most of the work I've done has been sort of following questions that I thought would be interesting and would be useful. I would like, I know Susanna agrees with me, to put in a thank you to Professor Barry Osmond, who is the head of our department, who brought together a group of outstanding biochemists. And so we, we thank, thank you, Barry. And of course, we'd like to thank the Royal Society for awarding us the medal because, of course, it draws attention to you know, our work and the modelling of photosynthesis, which, yes. is, yeah, which is really a highlight. Actually, we're thrilled. Yeah, we're absolutely thrilled. And, you know, when we received the email that we had been nominated, that we had received the Royal Medal, Graeme phone, telephoned me in the very early more hours <laughs> of the morning. He said, you have to look at your emails. And I said to him, I can look at my emails after breakfast. He said, no, no, you have to look at your emails now. And in the end, my husband prompted me to go and look at my emails. Yeah.